But this whole area of submission to governing authorities is a touchy area. Remember, Jesus said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. You know, it's interesting. He's, when he asked for the coin, whose image is on the coin? Caesar's. Well, then render to Caesar. He, most people miss the point. It's the other issue that's in. Who are you the image in? Who's, who, whose image are you in? God's. So render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, unto God's the things that are God's. Let the money be his, you should be God's. It's a double-sided thing. Many people only see half the story there. Be absolutely submissive to God, and you will discern from God's ways how to be secondarily submissive to human institution authorities. Your first obligation is to be submissive to God. And from that will derive your posture to human authority. Let's talk, you know, we, we'll go to, you know, we, at Romans 13, we usually engage this. Let's talk about 1 Peter 2. Let's just re take a couple of verses from Peter. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king or as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. That's why you get law-abiding is to silence the critics. The word damnation, by the way, uh, is a judgment, a condemnation. Judgment, not damnation in the, in the theological sense. The Bible does not speak in a vocabulary of a representative democracy. That's part of our dilemma here. That's where officials are elected and laws are drafted by elected officials and have authority over officials. So our allegiance is not to a person, but to a rule of law is the concept. So we make applications to our democratic context carefully. Submission in our republic is primarily to laws and constitutional processes and not to persons. Your allegiance is to the office of president, not the person of the president. There's a big difference. Our officials are actually our employees. You need to recognize that. Biblical submission is a readiness to obey law and uphold legal order, not an approval or an endorsement of all lawmakers or even all the laws, absolutely. Christ's absolute supremacy over our lives qualifies the absoluteness of human law. The Christian apology, uh, recognizes Christ and his law as the final authority. That makes sense, right? Romans 13 deals with this too. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that, are, that, that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive the to themselves, damnation. That's where the word damnation, there it means judgment or condemnation, not, not damnation in the theological sense. There's, there's exceptions to these in Acts 4, and we need to know the law in Acts 23 as examples to that. Let's take a look at Acts 4. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go outside out of the council, they conferred, conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. That's pretty stupid, but that's what they do. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John says, okay, that's what we'll do, right? No, that's not what they said. But Peter and John answered and said unto him, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing on how they might punish them, because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. The point really being is, they, their point is they obey God first, man second. That was their point. There, that was the case. They chose to ignore this edict from their governing council. And again, you and I have a different situation because it's not anticipated in the express terms of the Scripture. Our officials are actually our employees. The Bible does not seem to deal directly with the responsibilities of a democracy in which officials are elected and laws are drafted by elected officials and authority over the officials. You and I are committed to a rule of law, not a specific ruler. And submission to our republic is primary to laws and constitutional process, not to persons. And one of the problems we have is the Constitution is shredded and being discarded by our present 
culture in our present administration, which creates an ambig ambiguity that plunges us into lawlessness. Are we surprised? That's exactly what the Scripture predicted. Biblical submission is a readiness to obey law and uphold legal order, not an approval or an endorsement of all lawmakers or even the laws, absolutely. Christ's absolute supremacy over, over, over our lives qualifies the absoluteness of human law. John the Baptist's preaching is an example of a proper indictment of present government authority. Let's take a look at it. Matthew 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Wow, that's quite a statement by Jesus Christ. Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Pause. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Wow. Boy, there's a study that can come out of that distinction. But that's what Jesus said about John the Baptist. Where was John when Jesus is saying that of John the Baptist? He's in the can. He's in prison. Why? For publicly indicting the ruling king. Wow. Think about that. Gutsy guy. For when Herod had John arrested, he bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, the wife of his brother, Philip. And what John is saying unto him, it's not lawful for you to have her. Wow. Opposition to a leader's behavior and public criticism of it and declaration of moral unfitness for office is not necessarily inconsistent with a submissive spirit to the governing authorities. It cost John his head. He's beheaded. So he paid the price. Romans 13 continues, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. It's presuming that the rulers are a terror to evil works. What I mean, to good works. What happens if they are a terror to uh, good works and uh, rather than evil? Now, that's what leads to things like the American Revolution, what have you. Comes at a price. You can contrast this with rebellious Jews against the, Romans, the Roman law. Claudius expelled all the Jews from Rome. What is to be done when the rulers are evil and the terror to good works? That's, that's the dilemma we're facing. We have a unique mandate. I believe you and I are going to be accountable for this. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That's what we've been given. Well, with that comes an accountability, and we've blown it. The illiteracy of our electorate is the biggest problem in America, ignorance or apathy. The average person say, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> our first priority is knowing the truth about our leadership. Joseph Farah, the founder of World Net Daily, has dedicated his life to the idea that the primary mission of a newspaper is to be a watchdog on the government. And that's being challenged as we speak before the Supreme Court. If by some chance that should go against him, it will end free speech in America. If it doesn't go against him, we still have to be selective and recognize those few media that are being faithful to that charge. Because the tragedy is, big money owns most of the mainline media and they have an agenda of their own. And it's not truth. The crucial role of a free press. I encourage you, if you get a chance, to pick up a copy of Stop the Presses by Joseph Ferra and you'll discover a chronicle of events that have occurred in recent years that I had no idea. It gives you a whole different perspective of the warfare that's being waged in our country. I personally believe that we are going to see more persecution of Christianity in this country in the future. And I'm not alone in this. J. Vernon McGee, some several decades ago, pointed out that this persecution will probably not include many church members. The liberal church is so compromised today that they will go along with whatever comes along. He even went so far as to suggest that the attack against the true believers going underground will come from the denominational churches. Interesting for a guy that's pretty center line kind of guy.
And whose image is on the coin? Caesar's. Well, then render to Caesar. It, most people miss the point. It's the other issue that's in. Who are you the image in? Who's, who, whose image are you in? God's. So render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, unto God's the things that are God's. Let the money be his, you should be God's. Let's talk, we, you know, we, we'll go to, you know, we, at Romans 13, we usually engage this. Let's talk about 1 Peter 2. Let's just re take a couple of verses from Peter. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king or as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. But this whole area of submission to governing authorities is a touchy area. Remember, Jesus said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. You know, it's interesting. He's, when he asked for the coin. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. That's why you get law-abiding, is to silence the critics. The word damnation, by the way, uh, is a judgment, a condemnation. Judgment, not damnation in the, in the theological sense. It's a double-sided thing. Many people only see half the story there. Be absolutely submissive to God, and you will discern from God's ways how to be secondarily submissive to human institution authorities. Your first obligation is to be submissive to God. And from that will derive your posture to human authority.